please welcome top-ranked real estate expert and coach, Tom Ferry of Tom Ferry International. Hey, good morning. Good morning. How's it, do How's it going? So, uh, first of all, it's super cool to be relatively near my hometown. Um, how many of you have never seen me speak before? Raise your hands really high just so I know. Oh, I suck. All right, I gotta get to work. Um, I, I don't expect you guys to take notes. I actually can't stand being on the stage, which is probably gonna piss Brad off, but I don't care. Um, I, I would sit, but I can't sit. Sitting is like smoking, right? It just doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> Hi, Betty Graham. So I was given the challenge, hey, will you come talk to all these extraordinary individuals about the mistakes that you've witnessed in 35,000 coaching sessions? So for context, I have been coaching so long that there was a time in my career when I would say to my clients, Gary Gold, fax me in all of your numbers. Do you guys remember fax machines? I was super blown away when a headset suddenly showed up and I could like use both hands. Like I, I'm basically, the way I describe it is I'm somewhat the Dr. Phil of real estate. There's not a situation I haven't heard from, oh my God, I'm sleeping with my assistant, to oh my God, I just found out my husband is also sleeping with my assistant, right? <laughs> You can't make this stuff up, guys. <laughs> Today, we record every one of our coaching sessions, and oftentimes we find ourselves saying, this one needs to be edited. <laughs> so they also challenge me by saying, you only have 30 minutes, which is almost impossible for me, because the shortest talk that I would do would be 90 minutes, and that always takes me two hours, but if in Iowa, it takes like three or four hours for them to take notes, and a typical event for me is three days. So I'm gonna show you more visually a couple of examples, and then I'm gonna tell you stories, because I think we just learn more from stories than we do from points. You guys with me on this? So if you remember some of the stories, you'll get the point, and that'll be just fine. Can you guys throw up the first slide, somebody up back there, please? So forget that one. Clickety-click. Could you, there we go. Can you just read that out loud? So I think the biggest problem I see, whether I'm talking to a client in Sydney or a client in Paris or a client in Munich, or quite honestly, a person in Iowa, it doesn't really make a difference, that most of you are trying to solve little problems, not big problems, which is why most of you have little income, not big income. And I'm not saying that you know, your 850 or your million two isn't a lot, but how many of you live in California? After expenses and everything else, you made 225,000 bucks. If you live in New York, it's exactly the same. I would still call that small income in a luxury environment when you're selling 2 million, 5 million, 10 million, 20 million, 30 million dollar houses. Do me a favor, turn to your buddy and say, you need to make way more money. <laughs> right? All right, that was... <laughs> so that was clearly the point, I'm out, right? Like, that's it. But, but do you all know what I mean? The, the challenge is like, I talk to people in the high end. I was in New York City just two weeks ago doing a little event. Anybody from New York City in the house? Right, so super fun. One day fly in, 200 people at the Bank of America building. I knew just about everybody there. And, and when we finally got to Q&A, which I always love to do, the, the questions were like, what CRM should we be using? Like, that's a stupid question in 2018. You guys with me on this? Now, you might be saying, no, I'm actually trying to figure it out. I'm letting you know that's a stupid question. Let me give you a better question. How do I control 15 to 20% of all of the addressable market in my area? That's an inspiring question. How do I generate 50 to 60 referrals every single quarter to a luxury broker from around the world and convert at a third of them while sitting in Hawaii drunk off my ass? That is a better question. You guys with me? But the problem is many of you are sitting inside this room trying to figure out how you're going to go from 10 deals to 20 deals to 30 deals to 100 deals. And what happens is when you think small, you get small. Does that make sense? Like, you all should come with me and go hang out with my clients that used to do 1,700 deals a year all through REOs in Chino. Because you know what? Those guys and gals know how to hustle and think big because if they don't, when your average commission is 2,500 bucks, you gotta sell a lot. You with me on this? Like, that's the problem. So in 2018, in 2019, what problem are you fixated on solving? That's the first thing you gotta ask yourself. What are you trying to solve? And it can't be to just get that one property sold. That's small thinking. You with me on this? What's the big problem you're trying to solve to make a fortune? Let's go to the next one. You ready? Okay, find yourself on that aisle. <laughs> I'm dead serious. Find yourself on that aisle. Is your brand green? Is it blue? Is it black? Is it yellow? Is it shiny? Is it new? Is it round? Is it... 
Here's the deal, guys. Consumers are radically confused, yes or yes, right? Th heads up, they don't give a shit what brand you're with. Look at, I mean, I go spend time with the guys at Google and they go, look, here's the data. You know what they look for? Trustworthiness, market knowledge, it's all those things. But here's the dealio, my friends, and you guys all know this, you don't get to that unless you stand out and do something risky, unless you stand out and do something outside of your comfort zone. How many of you have a cell phone? <laughs> How many of you have hit live on the Facebook app in the last 24 hours? Live. That's how you're gonna survive in real estate. If you don't hit the live button, AKA Facebook live, if you don't get raw and authentic and risky and raise your hands if you're female. <laughs> no, cause most of my clients like, so just for, so you know, most of my clients are female above age 55. They've raised a husband sometimes three, four, five. <laughs> like they don't look like they have grandkids, but they have eight of them. You with me on this? And they're stunning, and, and here's all I keep saying to them. Maxine Gallons, Maxine Gallons. Does anybody know LaJola? Do you guys know where LaJola is? Maxine Gallons has been my personal client for 19 years. She's turning 81 coming up. She's now doing two birthdays a year because she doesn't want to wait. She's not taking the age, but she just wants two celebrations a year. Now, she's gonna do this year about three and a half, four million dollars in commission. She's 81. And guess what, guys? No, 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 no. It's not the age, it's that for 19 years, I've just been pushing her to be a little risky. And in 2018, 2019, when all of us have the attention span slightly more or less than a goldfish, if you're not punching consumers in the face, no one knows who you are. Right or wrong, guys? Right or wrong, guys? And by the way, your friends forget who you are, yes or yes? So I wanna give you guys an example, because one of my clients who's in the room did something kind of risky. He's got about 71,000. By the way, if you're from the middle of the country, this sucks, because I talk really fast. Here's the dealio, you ready? Or you're ADD and you're loving this. Because <laughs> I'll keep your attention slightly. One of my clients in the room started 10 years ago. I remember sitting on my deck, looking out over the ocean. I live in Newport Beach, and I, you know, I, don't th I think I was like holding my cell phone, if you remember those days. And we're talking about the importance of video and why video and why I started my YouTube channel and the impact that you know, doing this has had. And, and it wasn't that he in any way, shape, or form was saying, you know, look, I don't wanna do video, but he was asking, how do I do it differently? How do I do it better? Because a lot of people are now doing videos of properties. That was a conversation 10 years ago. Last week, he produced a film, and he did two, right? The classic, you all do, you go, by the way, let me just give you a heads up. The consumer does not need to see this. This magnificent five-bedroom colonial, here at the, and it's better like with the English woman accent, which I can't do at all. Like, that's shit in 2018, 2019. It gets no one's attention, right or wrong. Oh, but look at the port of share. Who cares? Put a Rolls Royce in front. No, you ready? Do something radically different if you want to stand out. Does that make sense? So I put together a little quick video. You're gonna watch this, but here's the deal. You ready? The beginning is what I don't want you to do, but it's what you always have to do. The other part of it is a part of a four minute video that I think is going to come down as the greatest marketing video of the year, if not the next five. Check it out. Hi, I'm Tim Boring. Smith from the Smith Group at Coal Banker Previews International. Welcome to 1813 East Bay Avenue in beautiful Newport Beach, California. This is how you sell real estate. Excuse me. Well, why yes? You mind telling us where we are? Oh, well, this is Newport Beach. Well, what is that? This. That. That is a Duffy. A, a Duffy? No, no, no. A Duffy. All right, you mind teaching us how to Duffy? Well, hell yeah. Come on down, guys. Wonderful. Yeah. We'll be Duffying all day. Two thousand on three lots, five bedrooms Ooh. with a loft, game room and a gym, and two bars for your gin. Infinity pool for the swim. Check the master, soak it in.
in. Solar power off the grid. Tesla backups for the win. Oh. Check the views you've been missing. Oh. Tim Smith with a listing. Tim Smith, ladies and gentlemen. Tim Smith. Timmy, stand up. Stand up. Now, here's the point. Here's the point. By the way, guys, do you guys see this? This is what happens if the Titanic goes down in 2018. <laughs> We're all like, I'm freezing my ass off. Are you getting this? <laughs> so I'm not even going to say to you in a 2018, 2019 environment, if you're not doing video, you're not doing anything. But let's just be clear. Television hasn't died, and it hasn't been replaced. But YouTube, by the way, right now, has surpassed on a daily basis all cable companies combined. Let me be clear, guys. YouTube has passed all cable companies combined, so a smart agent from Newport Beach can put together something creative and different, which they did in a day, because they've got an idea bank of all these fun things they want to do, and they finally found a cool $45 million listing to shoot it all in one day and make it rock. Does that make sense? Clap it up again for Timmy, if you would, please. So the point is, if you don't find yourself saying, holy shit, this may go really bad, you shouldn't do it. You with me on this? Like, it's got to be a little more risque. You with me? Now, who has been to the Tokyo fish market? Say aye. OK, so check this out. I'm in Munich, Germany, and I'm running on a treadmill at the Rocco Forte property with my buddy, Baron von Volker Weissenberger. He's German. And he's watching MTV, which is basically just David Hasselhoff songs over and over again in Germany. <laughs> And I find the only thing that speaks English, constant negative news, right? So I'm watching constant negative news, and I see something that endears me because my wife's family's from Boston. I see this bearded, you know, Bostonian fisherman saying, it's not fair. It's not fair. The Japanese are coming into our waters, and they're taking all of our fish. It's not fair. Then they switch to the Japanese CEO, and he says, in perfect English, we discovered that it was far more effective to fly 747s over the ocean, casting down our little radar to discover where the larger fish were. Then we take our nine boats and our six miles of fish, and we scoop everything up, and we take it back. And the ones that are too small, rather than throwing them out, we put them into a lead incubation follow-up plan to grow them, <laughs> then cut their head off and sell them later. And then they go back to the Japanese fisherman who says, it's not fair. My question for you guys is, how big is the net you're casting in your business? The biggest mistake I see amongst luxury brokers, if they actually think that their database is enough, that is a vital mistake, and I don't care how long you've been selling homes. I don't care. Maxine has been selling real estate for nearly as long as I've been alive, and she recognizes no more than 45% of her business from the people that already know her and like her, because you want to know why? There's people that know you, and there's people that don't. Which group is bigger? Which group is bigger? So we've got to find those people to add them into this group that become more referrals and advocates, et cetera. So pretty obvious, right? Here's the next one. Little slide, dude. You're taking some of my time. Clickety-click. Thank you. Now, what do those two businesses have in common? Biggest mistake I see luxury agents making, get this. You ready? You think price over process. You think price over process, and process trumps everything. Both of those two brands follow a very similar process called online registration. Get your hotel online, use an app, show up, someone checks you in, they hand you a key. At Motel 6, you don't get a key that goes like this, right? You get the same exact swipe that you get at the Mandarin Oriental. Now, the Mandarin Oriental is certainly a nicer hotel for the vast majority of us, but here's the deal. They have the same exact thing. They run a better process. And the mistake that I see agents make is you forget when we won World War II and we decided after we just annihilated the Japanese world. I'm a big fan of Japan. I love Japan, right? <laughs> so just be clear on this. And we gave them a blessing. After all that was said and done, we gave them Dr. Edward Deming Jr., who his most famous quote says, the system will produce what a system will produce, nothing more, nothing less. And he basically revolutionized what we see in Japanese business today, starting with his processes around how do you run an effective business. Think about this. The first problem is we're not trying to solve a big enough problem. The second thing is that everything inside your business looks like this. Come on, seven. 
Think about it. What makes Timmy Smith, Maxine Gellens, Gary Gold, so many of the people that Christoph Chu I just saw in the back of the room, it's process, my friends. They understand when a lead comes in, we do A, B, C, one, two, three, and it lasts this long until basically they list or die. That's basically how it works, right? When I get a new listing, I'm not reinventing it every time. Here is the checklist. This is what I do. This is how it works. If you're still working by memory, Think about that. It's 2018, it's almost 2019, it's gonna be 2020 on Tuesday. Look your buddy right in the eye and say, your head is a scary place to be. <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about. Okay, do you know, do you know this famous skit? Yeah. Do you guys know this famous skit? Now, so, so for some of you that are younger, you'll have to Google this. This is when the world was in black and white. I grew up, my mom was a Mouseketeer at Disneyland, pulled up out of a lineup from Walt Disney and like became one of the first Mouseketeers. It helped that she was five foot 10, like six four with the Afro. Like, so it was pretty obvious. I think Walt was like right at her boobs basically. <laughs> but here's the deal. I grew up in this sort of like fun, exciting world of like music and dance. And like my mom would watch this show and I remember just laughing, the house full of laughter. But when I saw this as a CEO of a company, I was reminded of basically two things. If you remember the skit, it's the chocolates coming down the chocolate factory and their job is to basically take the chocolate, package it up and put it inside the box. And as soon as they had the basics down, the manager said, speed it up. And all of a sudden, what were they doing? They were eating the leads. They were shoving the leads in their bra. They were putting them in the hat. And, and the point that I wanna make to you is this, okay, I was just with, um, who's from New York again? So I was just with Josh, R Tony Haber. Holy shit. Hi, Tony, how are you? I've had many drinks with that woman. <laughs> Good to see, I need to make sure we see each other. Sorry, we're having a moment. Let's make sure we see each other afterwards. Cool, cool, cool. Old personal client, longtime friend. So check the, what was I talking about? <laughs> yes. Drinks, <laughs> yeah. is it already time? The biggest mistake I see amongst luxury brokers, I was just with my client in New York City, Josh Rubin. Josh is with Doug Asselman. He's the number one transaction agent last year. He works the low end. His average sales price is two and a half million. You with me? That's like a no bedroom, no bath in Tribeca. But here's the deal. <laughs> so, so one of the sort of badges of honor that we talk about all the time is, how many transactions did we close this month from a lead we generated a year ago, two years ago, three years ago? See, that, my friends, is the biggest mistake I see top agents in the luxury market making. You generate enough opportunities socially and maybe through your internet activities and other things that you do, but all the money in this business is in the long-term follow-up, right? They didn't have a good process for follow-up. I wanna show you a company I invested in a few years ago. Clickety-click, dude. The company's called Agentology. This is not a shameless plug for them, but what they do is they manage several hundred thousand leads a month for luxury agents, for you know, middle producing agents in terms of volume, et cetera. The things that stand out for me is as the lead comes in, first of all, they contact them in under five minutes. That's, that makes sense. We live in the experience economy, you with me? Clients aren't putting their name and cell phone and email into a system on a computer to say, I hope someone calls me in three days. You with me on this? They want it, how fast, guys? Instantaneously, if Amazon only worked 50% of the time, how often would you use it? If Amazon only worked 50% of the time, how often would you use it? Okay, who, who likes Netflix? If, if the Netflix shows, if every like 50% of the time you clicked on it and you wanted to watch, you know, Ozarks, anybody watching Ozark right now? Oh my God, like insane, right? We could just have a whole conversation about Ozark, screw this whole real estate stuff. <laughs> Here's the deal, you ready? If Netflix only worked 50% of the time, we would cancel that subscription, right or wrong? Well, here's what you guys understand. You're being canceled on more than 50% of the time because your lead follow-up sucks shit. <laughs> I don't mean to be rude. It's not, it's not designed to be rude. It's designed to get you to think that in the high end, the look, I'm looking at property in Jackson Hole. You guys know Jackson Hole? I've been looking at property in Jackson Hole for three years. The same gal's falling up with me. I'm getting closer and closer and closer and closer. Kids are almost out of school, almost gonna be an empty nester. I'm finally gonna make a decision. But if she stopped falling up on me, I can go to a plethora of sites and I can find other options, yes or yes. Yes or yes, guys. So your challenge, like my challenge, is we've gotta have thousands of people that feel like we are there with them all the time. Starting with this, 76% of leads engage with us after 10 attempts. You get a new lead from an open house. Do you go after them 10 times? Because the data shows 76% engagement. I wanna work with you, I get you, I understand you, after 10 attempts. You know what most luxury agents do? Here's the average, 
2.1, 2.1. Hey, call us. We want to list our $5 million dollar house. I'll follow up with you 2.1 times. And if you don't come to me, I will be poor. <laughs> I want you to think about that. Let's go to the next slide. You ready? I'm almost done. Sandcastles. Sandcastles and stars. Does anybody know uh, the name Steve Games? Right? Um, has a little company, Sotheby's, down in San Diego. I've uh, been a friend of Steve's for a long time. He, like, I, I, I do a gratitude for Steve almost every day because 16 years ago when I started my new business, he was my first corporate client. And when the first check came in, I looked at my wife and said, holy shit, we can make payroll. This is awesome, right? So I have a lot of you know, passion for this guy. He invited me to go down and do a little consulting project on a place he did called Bahia de los Sueños, which used to be called Bahia de los Muertos, but Bay of the Dead is a bad marketing name. So he switched it, right? And he says to me, come down, take a look at it, help me, you know, help me figure out how I can sell these, you know, these properties that are kind of in between Cabo and La Paz. It's the only safe harbor, and he had this mile and a half of oceanfront, like in this great little bay. So I would go there, and I'd hang out, and we'd drink margaritas, and I'd take my young family, and I remember being down there with my, at that time, eight-year-old and six-year-old. Who has kids? Who does not have kids? Okay, who's single? Raise your hands really high. Look around, this is good dual income opportunity in the room, by the way. <laughs> like this, I can see you. Like, yeah, this, so baby. Okay, tell me your name. First of all, first of all, tell me your name. Tell me your name. Denise, Denise I freaking love you. If I had a wallet on me, I would give you a hundred bucks, but let me give you a hint. I can't say the client's name because she's wildly successful, like, you know, like a couple hundred million dollars here in sales. She recently is, you know, single, and she's like, I don't know what to do, and I'm like, Tinder. She's like, Tinder, she's like, Tinder is awesome. I can get laid and get leads from one app. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Like, some of you need to check it out. If you're married, let that point go, right? Let's <laughs> let that point go. So I'm down on the beach, and we had a whole day of consulting, and then that night, we go out to the little local restaurant, which is down the beach, and it's like, you know, like, I don't know, 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night, and my, my wife says, I'm gonna go to sleep, and I'm like, no, no problem, I'm gonna sit with the boys, and we're down on the beach, and if you have not laid in a bay that's just sparkling, you know, just like stars everywhere, and my, you know, my younger guy's here, and he's basically completely zonked out, and my older boy's here, super analytical. I don't know, I, I know he's redhead, and he kind of looks like me, so I know he's mine, but he's off the charts, IQ smart, and he says to me, Daddy, at eight, how many stars are up there? And I was like, I don't know, because first of all, I've had like three margaritas, right? So I'm like, huh? <laughs> Math was not my thing, bro. I need a calculator. Where's my CFO? I say, well, I don't know. They say that if you, if you like put your hand up like this, you cross out like five million stars. So what does an eight-year-old do? Both, you know, both and feet up. And he's like, well, how many is that? And then what if I do this? And what if I just stand in front of you? And then he says to me, Daddy, how old is the earth? And I said, you know, Michael, I don't know, but I was in Minnesota recently and I found like they, they found some rock and I'm not a geologist under any shape or form, but you know, like they carved it or cut it and figured out with rings or something that this particular rock was like, you know, like a hundred and gazillion bazillion years old. And he says, how many zeros is that? I'm like, I have no idea. Well, <laughs> go find a stick on the beach. And he goes down the stick and he just starts writing out one comma zero 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 comma zero 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 comma zero 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 comma zero 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 all the way to the end. And then he goes, Daddy, that's a lot of zeros. I'm like, right. And he goes, how old are you? And I was like, I was like 37, right? I'm like, 37. And he, in the stick, 37, below this number, like a math equation. And then he says, how will you be when you die? And I was like, well, there's no like birth certificate expiration date that I'm aware of. But I want to live to be 100, but I want to just be right in my mind. So it could be 125, who knows, right? Maybe we all need to smoke more weed. Just check, look into it. I didn't say that to my nine-year-old, so. <laughs> but here's the deal, right? We're in this dialogue, and it's all of a sudden it's getting kind of meaningful, and it's 11.30 at night, and we're sitting there, and I say to him, you know, Michael, it's not when you die, it's what you do with your life. It's the time. I know people that lived a very short life, but the impact they had on their friends and their loved ones was meaningful and significant, so it's not about, you know, the time or how old, it's, it's what you do every day. And he's like, soaking it in, and he says, Okay, and I go, it's like that moment. I'm like, dude, what do you want to do when you grow up? And he goes, I want to build skyscrapers. And I'm like, real estate. He's been listening. This is good, right? <laughs> Now, we were just with my buddy Jimmy, who is in the mafia, and they build property in, like, like Chicago with me. Like, no, 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 like, literally, like, his uncle is, like, like was the, the mafia attorney of the famous Hoobie Doo guy. I can't think of his name now. So he's like, I want to be like Uncle Jimmy. I want to build those, like, high school. I said, yeah, well, let's do that. And he says, okay. And I said, well, then let's start. 
Let's start right now. Let's do it right now. And he's like, looking at me, and I go, sandcastles, let's go. And we spend like the next hour building these sandcastle skyscrapers. Because once you know what you want to do and you realize it's a finite amount of time, you got to start. You got to start. You with me? So we're doing this, and he's telling me this is the penthouse, and this is where mommy and I live, and this is the basement, this is where you and Steven live, and this is the pool, and this is the gym. And I'm like, what are you going to sell the penthouses for? He's like, well, there's only one, and it's mine. I'm like, well, what about the level below? He's like, I'm going to sell for like, $50 trillion. I was like, "That's a you sound like all Beverly Hills listings right now. That's awesome. <laughs> totally overpriced. Got it. Okay, good, right? So we're in this dialogue, and it's just, it's just a passionate moment. You with me? It's just a passionate moment. My very Italian wife comes down, and she has this look, because Stephen is now, like, his legs are now into the water because the water's coming up, and I'm not paying attention at all, so he's going to drown in a minute. And Michael and I are sandcastling out of our minds under the stars, and she turns and she says, what are you guys doing? And my son goes, we're building sandcastle skyscrapers because we don't have any time. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs>